Awesome. Awesome. Um, I also want to uh, put your hands together for uh, the director, John Doyle. The writer of this wonderful piece, Bill Hallamach. Our esteemed panel also includes Miss Karen Thornton, producer, writer, director of the Thomas Paine Project. Which is a filler. Yes. Another Thomas Paine expert and uh, a luminary in the field of Paine, uh, Dr. Francis Chu of the New School. And last but certainly not least, one of our own, Gary Burton, the coordinator of the Institute for Thomas Paine Studies here, and the secretary of the Thomas Paine National Historical Association. So, so um, this is, um, I have so many uh, questions because this brought up so many different <coughs> topics. I just thought it was fantastic. So I'm going to start with something that's a little local to, uh, you filming this, Greg? Yes, sir. Uh, make sure you get my good side. Um, <laughs> Which one? Can, can you talk about <clears throat> Thomas, Thomas Paine's connection to our area? The New Rochelle area, what is the significance there? Why is it important? And, and I'll just put that out to anyone who wants to hop in and talk about pain and, and New Rochelle. It was an accident that he came to New Rochelle. The state of New York to uh, honor Payne's contribution to the American Revolution. In 1783, awarded him a farm up, up North Avenue here, where the monument is. It was a 300-acre farm, and it was uh, given to him when it was taken away from a Tory who had fled to Canada, a uh, Huguenot. Uh, DeVoe was his name. Um, and he acquired his uh, farm, and he really didn't touch it until 1803. When he came back from Europe, he wound up settling there, uh, building a lot of the cottage that's up uh, North Avenue, and uh, stayed there for a couple years, and then he got tired of the rural life and went back to Greenwich Village in New York City where he died. So he was here a couple of years, and he left his mark, that's for sure. Um, it was a very strong, loyalist area at the time. There wasn't that many revolutionaries up here. They were all down in New York City which is a why, why one of the reasons he went back to New York City pretty quickly. After they refused him the vote, as you've seen, and after someone took a shot at him, uh, the bullet hole is still in his bedroom window. Um, so that's one another reason why he left uh, for a couple of years. So his memories of New Rochelle weren't that great, <laughs> but uh, it certainly helped define this town and this area um, across the country. People who follow pain know about New Rochelle in that light, it's very historic. And we hope to reestablish those historical ties to our past in New Rochelle again uh, with this institute as well as our association on the street. Excellent. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely, I think so. Um, anybody else want to, to comment and add their two cents on the New Rochelle and Payne connection? I just want to say one thing of, of interest is that, that doing a play in the location that the play takes place in is, is wonderful for us as a performing pair. If there's a resonance to location, like space means a lot to mm -hmm. theater people. And so doing this in New Rochelle and letting Adam get the line shot, we're actually <laughs> speaking yeah. in the world we're here, right. uh, is, is quite meaningful to Right. Play. Yeah, I'm not sure if the, if the, uh, the audience thought that was inserted. <laughs> or that was, you know, in the script already. It was in the script already. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Karen. Well, no, I just was really curious to hear about the collection. I don't know whether you should speak to that or... Well, Gary would be the, uh, the man to speak well, to that. Would you like to speak to that? I'd rather talk about the play, but... Okay. I don't know. If we have time, I'll get back yeah, to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, another question. Um, since we are in an um, uh, election year... Um, do you see any modern-day Thomas Paines out there? Uh, 
Can you speak about that? The candidates, either Republic or uh, Democrat, or in the middle. Um, anybody out there is um, sort of Thomas Paine-ish? <laughs> oh, got mouths of candidates themselves. I would say that Obama probably comes closest to it in terms of ideals. Mm -hmm. You know, well, at least back in 2008, we talked about, you know, we've got to get the CEO compensation down, and we've got to have proper taxes on the rich, uh, you know, go back to the Clinton tax, you know, taxes. And what is funny, though, is that the right today are now actually trying to co-opt Payne. They've actually, I think, co-opted more of this populist rhetoric. Like, hey, this is common sense. You know, we really should not be having, you know, large governments. So it's funny how it's just sort of like shifted around. Mm. Mm. Well, everybody wants a piece of pain, and, <laughs> yes, yes. and they they haven't read him so thoroughly that they realize that he represents more than their own particular mm -hmm. interest group. Yeah. It's fascinating, yeah. Yeah. So but that actually means how how universal pain is. So you see the candidates sort of cherry picking. Yes, yes. very much so. And I think it's not just the candidates, but just really, you know, both political parties, because you have the Tea Party, and they're <coughs> mostly sticking to you know, the common sense mm -hmm. of pain. You know, limited government, that's the best sort possible. And yet, it's funny how they, they've sort of forgotten all of the little distinctions there about birth, origins, hereditary privileges and whatnot. And they never get into, um, you know, of course, they're not gonna get into rights of male, much less age of reason. Which is why, actually, by the way, why more proper conservatives do not like pain, because they know what he's all about. Actually, though, there are those on the evangelical right who quote Paine because Paine quoted the Bible, and they're very pleased with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it sort of just goes in there. Paine was yeah. wonderful because he wrote for people, and he understood their references. He, he had been raised with an Anglican mother, mm -hmm. as you pointed out so well, and he had um, no shyness about speaking to everyone with quotes from the Bible that proved his point. Right. But that yeah. ends up pleasing the right as well as the left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bill? Yeah, I just was in answer to your question about who's out there that would be most exemplified pain today. Um, I'd have a hard time really with any of the, the actual political candidates, but uh, if I could say this, my suspicion is that somewhere in the, the Occupy movement there is, yes. there, yes, there's, there's, exactly. there, Tom, Tom, Tom Payne lurks somewhere. I don't know who he is or who she is, but I know, she, I know they're there. So, Somebody Michael Warman. I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and just on this notion of you know, co opting, right up here on my t shirt, uh, uh, we have it in our power to begin the world again. Yeah. Quoted uh, by Ronald Reagan. <laughs> you know, as, as though. <laughs> That's fine. But. But, I, you know, you can find a line here and there, you know, Payne wanted to build a world that was quite different from the world that Ronald Reagan wanted to, to be in. And I think, I think it's in, you know, all the stuff that, I, that, that, uh, that was in the play is in agrarian justice. Uh, and I find it kind of ironic as a role of panel tonight, even having just seen the play, Hearing people talk, you know, pain talk about uh, people being denied health care and stuff. And, you know, while the Supreme Court is, you know, considering overturning the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, you know, and you just wonder, you know, Payne said, can't we take care of the sick people? Can we have to just let people die? And, uh, you know, some revolutions don't end and are still left to be fought and, and, and won. I think another thing about uh, candidates that's important to note is that I don't think Payne was a candidate. And I think one of the things we need to be really conscious of is that those who buy for political power are often not the people who get the opportunity to have these voices. And, and that Payne ends up being a voice of ideas. And that's what makes him special for us. Um, he wasn't buying for his own, his own power, maybe his own recognition but not his own power necessarily. And, and as a result, without that candidate part, he can speak much more freely, and we can use him in a way that, that uh, allows him to uh, confront all of the issues at hand instead of allowing the party idea mm -hmm. to limit his thinking. Uh, and, and, and I think that's what 
powerful about him and, and why we don't see people like that uh, in, in the big public eye today. Because one thing that comes clearly about Payne in many fictional treatments, or you know, both, actually both fictional and non-fiction, said he did not believe in compromise. And in politics, that's, you know, for a candidate, that's most what it comes down to. You asked about who might be a young Payne today. I don't know, but perhaps somewhere out there in the Arab Spring, there's someone. His work has been translated into so many languages, and he taught people to speak truth to power. So therefore, perhaps there's someone out there we don't even know who is not, as you say, a candidate, but who is forming a voice. Do you know one interesting thing is that for Occupy Wall Street, one of their slogans, another world is possible. And I thought, I wonder if they'd actually pick the from that. Along with the declaration, of course, different, but I mean, another world is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have one more question, and I'm going to open it up to you guys, because I'm sure you're chomping at the bit. Um, he, since he is so <clears throat> powerful, intelligent, astute, um, why is he not recognized like a Franklin or a Washington in the general public, in the general public, why is he not a name that rolls off of people's tongues? I think because he was intentionally slept up, swept under the rug because he's dangerous. It's simple, it's very simple, simple. It makes, makes sense, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, well on that note, let's open it up to anybody. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd just like to offer the, uh, the thought that maybe since he was a pamphleteer and he uh, did information, uh, people like uh, Tom Hartman on the radio yeah. and uh, Ed Schultz and Rachel Maddow, they go out there and they get these stories <coughs> and other people like that. And so uh, that's where uh, it, I would love it if we had a, a Tom Payne uh, award every uh, uh, year to mm -hmm. award somebody like that. Now we'll get the, now we'll get the name out, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is for Mr. Hollenbach. I'm just curious, as he's, as he's doing the play, we're in 1790 France, seeing the, the death of Louis the 16th, we're talking uh, about Valley Forge, we're talking uh, about the Louisiana Purchase, I, and I felt like, wait a minute, what year am I supposed to be in right now? There was a, a lot of chronological of <coughs> jumping around. Did you do that for, uh, for a particular reason? Or were you organizing um, by idea rather than by year? Or how, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Um, the year we're in is, uh, and I'm a terrible date person. I should have looked at like, some dates in my notes. But, um, we are in the year when he, he, he was living in New Rochelle. Okay. It's sort of, it's... I think it's 1807. That sounds about right, yeah. Uh, it's not the very end, but it's, it's sort of near the end. He's, um, and I'm quite happy to believe it, take 1807. But we're in that year, and he is denied the right to vote. Uh -huh. He is, and so, you know, I've, I tried to construct, you know, not just a, um, a pain lecture. I'm Tom Payne, this is, yeah. you know, if I were going to do that, I'd have gone, I guess, at the beginning and then just moved, you know, but, but my, my aim when, I, when uh, John first asked me to talk to me about writing the play was, you know, to write a play, something that actually had a dramatic uh, structure, and I struck on, you know, here's this guy who helps launch the American Revolution, and they're going to deny him the right to yeah. vote, and, you know, you got an hour which is about what the play runs, so we, we're striking that clock. An hour to decide, is he, I think, to do that to this guy? <laughs> so there's a real sense of, so that's the time that's passing. Okay. But in the process, he's, he's talking to these supporters, you guys, who've come, come to his house. And uh, so it's a kind of a ram, you know, chronological yeah. ramble yeah. about things. You know, one thing, you know, stream of consciousness he's thinking about, uh, he thinks back to, you know, he's being denied, and he thinks, well, the people of France made me a representative, and then, and then he's in jail, and he thinks about, oh, my God, the people in Thetford who would, you know, laugh at, so he just jumps around, and, it's, and I know it's a little bit, I'm sure it's a little bit uh, 
hard to follow at times, but I, you know, yeah. I just hope you go with the flow. You know, yeah, like, I, I, I would say, and I keep my fingers crossed. Well, when we first decided to, to work on this, one of the things I said to Bill was that I wanted history to be in service of ideas. And, and that if we let his, the ideas be in service of history, we lose their context for today. And so I, I said to Bill, there's some things I really care about us making sure we talk about. Like if we don't use agrarian justice, I don't want to do the play. Like that, that's crucial for me. So, so that, that those ideas are, are crucial for Iron Age as a company. Uh, and I, we need to talk about the, some of the, the issues about uh, the individual uh, and capital punishment we care about. It. And so there were things I said, let's make sure we talk about these things. To be honest, the original idea we had was that he would be in the cell and that he would be feverish. And that's how we would be able to jump from place to place. But that became maddening way too quickly. And so, 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 we yeah. had, so Bill took a much more sensible route uh, and found this way to craft it around this uh, this other idea, so you know that's where we're coming from. Thank you.